Hey everyone, welcome back to my channel for the first video of 2020. Happy New Year. I hope you guys all had a great New Year. I was sick, but that's okay. I am back and ready to make some hopefully good videos in 2020. So Russia is a country that's been in the news quite a bit lately. At one point a year or two ago, it seemed like you couldn't even go a day without hearing words like Russiagate or collusion, but that's not what we're here to talk about. The Kremlin has been the seat of Russian government for centuries, but some of its former residents may have never left. Let's check out the hauntings at the Kremlin. So in order to do this as efficiently as possible, I'm going to have to give a brief overview of the history of the Kremlin and Russia in general. If you're not a history person, I'm so sorry. I'm going to try and keep it brief and only go over the details that are important to the hauntings. So first off, what is the Kremlin? Kremlin comes from the Russian word Kreml, which means citadel or fortress. The Kremlin is an area in central Moscow, which is of course Russia's capital city. The term is often used generally to refer to the government buildings in Russia, which are there. But there's a lot more there too, including churches, a bell tower, palaces, museums, and offices. The first building in the area was a fortress built in the 1100s by Yuri Dolgoruki. By the way, Russian is not my strong suit, so I might butcher some of these pronunciations, but I'm going to do my best, so please bear with me. Walls, towers, and two churches followed in the 1300s, but it wasn't until the reign of Ivan the Great that the Kremlin really began to grow. By the time Ivan the Great, or Ivan III, was born, grand princes in the area had been warring and feuding for decades. In fact, Ivan himself was born right in the middle of a civil war. He ruled as Grand Prince of Moscow from 1462 until his death in 1505. And he's often credited with laying the foundations for a centralized Russian state. By the time Ivan actually took the throne, all of the warring and feuding had caused the Kremlin to fall into decay. He rebuilt a lot of the buildings that were already there and added even more new ones. A lot of them are now famous, such as the Ivan the Great Bell Tower. Can't imagine where he got that name from. He was also responsible for the construction of the Cathedral of Assumption, built to be the Kremlin's main church, and Tarim Palace, which was the royal residence and now serves as home of the Russian president. But the history of Russia, much like a lot of countries, wasn't all sunshine and roses. Upon the death of Ivan the Great in 1505, his son, Prince Vasily III, took the throne. He died in 1533, leaving the throne to his three-year-old son, Ivan IV. Yelena Glinskaya, Prince Vasily's wife and Ivan's mother, ruled in his place until her death in 1538. Ivan was eight years old at the time and didn't officially take over the role as Grand Prince until 1547 at the age of 16. He also became Russia's first Tsar, which is basically their version of emperors, a tradition that would continue for about 400 more years. More on that later. During his reign, or maybe even before, Ivan IV earned the nickname Ivan the Terrible, and from everything I've read, it was pretty well deserved. After his first wife's death in 1560, Ivan went into a deep depression, became paranoid, and became convinced that she had been murdered. He left Russia and threatened to renounce his title as Tsar. He eventually agreed to return, but only if he was given complete control of the region surrounding Moscow, as well as to be allowed to execute traitors and confiscate the property of other criminals. Ivan was also known for fits of rage, one of which caused the death of his own son and heir in 1581. He also caused his pregnant daughter-in-law to miscarry by kicking her in the stomach. He would plunder cities or get other people to do it on his behalf and would often kill the citizens just because he could. 
His victims' severed heads would often be thrown at the feet of their families. Anyone who stood in his way was kidnapped or killed. The wives and children of the members of his court were often killed in his palace, which is still in the Kremlin today. He's also said to have blinded the builders of the famous St. Basil's Cathedral because he didn't want them to be able to build anything that beautiful again. However, it's not true if this is a real thing or just a legend. Over the course of his reign, Ivan the Terrible is thought to be responsible for the deaths of 450,000 people. Ivan died in 1584 and was buried within the Kremlin at the Cathedral of St. Michael the Archangel. He was succeeded on the throne by his son, Theodore, but Theodore proved to not be a very good ruler either. After Theodore's death in 1598, a political crisis called the Time of Troubles began. This would eventually lead to the start of the Romanov dynasty in 1613. So let's skip ahead about 300 years to the early 1900s. Once again, Russia was in the midst of political turmoil. People weren't too happy with imperial rule in Russia, which had become one of the most impoverished countries in Europe. Food shortages had led to strikes among industrial workers, and a new political party called the Bolsheviks, led by Vladimir Lenin, believed that the country should be controlled by the peasants and workers. This is a gross oversimplification of what they believed, but we're here to talk about ghosts, not politics. And we will get to the ghosts, I promise. Long story short, Tsar Nicholas II and his entire family were killed in 1917, bringing an end to the over 300-year Romanov dynasty. In 1923, the Bolsheviks, who would later become known as the Communist Party, took over the country, which then became known as the Soviet Union, the world's first communist state. In 1918, Lenin had survived an assassination attempt. Doctors operated and were able to recover the bullet he'd been shot with, but after the operation, he became ill, and he was left partially paralyzed and unable to speak. He did make a partial recovery, but his health continued to go up and down until his death in 1924. Lenin was famously embalmed and buried in a mausoleum in Red Square, which is adjacent to the Kremlin. Lenin's body is still on display today, and his tomb is a pretty big tourist attraction. With a decent amount of upkeep, his body has, for the most part, managed to maintain its appearance and look relatively the same as it did when he died, almost 100 years ago. Can you really believe it's been that long? It seriously seems like the year 2000 ended, like, yesterday. Or maybe I'm just old. After Lenin's death, a power struggle began in the Soviet Union. In 1929, leadership went to an administrator in the Communist Party, Joseph Stalin, another name you've almost certainly heard before. Stalin was notoriously horrible. He wanted control of the farms in the country because he thought that would help him gain control of the economy. Of course, the farmers weren't too thrilled about handing over their livelihoods to him, but any who stood in his way were killed or exiled. This also led to famine across the country and millions of people died. Stalin's practices also weakened the Soviet army during World War II, which made it easier for the Germans to invade, though they were driven out later on. He also killed people he believed to be political threats. More on that later as well. He's estimated to be responsible for the deaths of 20 million people during his rule, a number that makes Ivan the Terrible's reign look like nothing. Stalin's rule ended when he died in 1953. He was embalmed like Lenin and originally buried in Lenin's mausoleum. His body was later moved and is now buried in the Kremlin walls. The Soviet Union collapsed on New Year's Eve of 1991. Boris Yeltsin took over as president and remained there until he resigned in 1999 and handed over power to Vladimir Putin. Putin left office in 2008, but was re-elected in 2012. And of course, he is still Russia's president today, and at least in my house, the subject of many, many fart jokes. 
So now that you know a little bit about Russia's history, at least the history relevant to this video, let's talk about ghosts. There are a lot of people buried at the Kremlin and a lot of people who died there. Some of these people have reportedly been spotted wandering the grounds, but nobody really knows their names. The three main people who are said to haunt the grounds are Ivan the Terrible, Lenin, and Stalin. Stalin is supposedly the ghost with the most sightings, but I couldn't find any specific ones. He's believed to appear during times of crisis in Russia, and it's said that he wants to reestablish order. The room he's in is said to get cold when he appears, which is pretty common with ghosts in general. People have claimed to see Ivan the Terrible's shadow and hear his footsteps as they walk the halls. I'm not really sure how they know it's him, though. Maybe he has a distinct shadow and walk. His ghost is also said to appear engulfed in flames, though again, I'm not really sure why. There's another legend that said Ivan had so-called black books where he recorded the names of people he tortured or killed. As the story goes, Ivan enlisted the help of a monk to put these books together and then buried the monk alive in the walls with the books so that they could be bound together forever. Seems like kind of a dick move to someone who helped you out, but this is Ivan the Terrible we're talking about. We shouldn't be too shocked. But the most famous ghost story surrounding Ivan the Terrible is his supposed appearance to Tsar Nicholas II and his wife the night before Nicholas's coronation. Years later, when Nicholas's reign and his legacy all went to hell, this was seen by a lot of people as a bad omen. So the ghosts we've talked about so far, and most ghosts in general, have to die in order to appear as, you know, ghosts. But I guess Lennon was a special case because he was supposedly appearing as a ghost before he even died. The first supposed paranormal sighting of Lennon was by a security guard at the Kremlin in 1923. Lennon was still alive at this point, but in pretty bad health. Some sources said he actually walked with a cane, but I couldn't confirm this. When the security guard first saw Lennon, he just assumed it was actually him. But at the time, Lennon was actually in Gorky, a park about eight miles from the Kremlin, depending on what part you go to and how you get there. Later on that night when the story came out, other witnesses came forward and said they'd seen Lennon at the Kremlin that night as well. What's more, the sickly Lennon who had trouble walking was said to have been walking normally and appeared in pretty good health in general. He ended up dying a few months after this sighting. Lennon's ghost has been spotted in various buildings after his death as well. Some people believe that Lenin will continue to haunt the Kremlin as long as his body is in his mausoleum. In a 2017 survey, 58% of Russians said they thought Lenin's body should be moved and reburied elsewhere, though 32% of those thought he should be buried in the Kremlin walls. Maybe one day his body will be moved, but it's been there for almost a century, so I don't think that's going to happen anytime soon. There are smatterings here and there of other ghost stories on the grounds. I've read sources that said the area where the Kremlin is today used to be a pagan healing ground. I guess people think the involvement of pagans contributes to the paranormal activity. Personally, if the Kremlin's ghosts are real, I think the country's history of violence and all of the political turmoil is more than enough to explain why some ghosts have unfinished business. I've also read that the grounds are supposedly haunted by another communist leader named Sergei Kirov. Kirov was assassinated in 1934, and there's speculation his assassination was actually ordered by Stalin, who saw him as a political threat. The source I read said Kirov was assassinated in the Kremlin, but he was actually assassinated in the Communist Party headquarters in Leningrad, which is now St. Petersburg. But he is buried at the Kremlin, so maybe he's still hanging around. The last thing I want to mention is UFOs. A UFO was sighted over the Kremlin sometime in the 1800s. This strange object stopped moving before a flash of light lit up the sky. 
Another UFO was sighted above the Kremlin in 2009. So before I go, I want to mention this book that I got some of the historical information from, and it's Moscow History, Art, and Architecture by Kathleen Burton Merle. If that sounds like something you're interested in, I will leave a link below. So that's just about all I have for you today on the hauntings at the Kremlin. So let me know, do you think the Kremlin is really haunted? And have you ever been there? Or have you ever been to Russia? I've never been, but my parents have a few times, and all the pictures they bring back are absolutely gorgeous. I'm so jealous of anyone who got to see them in person. If you enjoyed this video, be sure to like and share it. And for more dark content, I hope that you will consider subscribing and hitting that bell. Thanks so much for watching, and have a creepy day. Bye, guys.